everybody, to another edition of Dane and News Grand Valley Railroad. Uh, this week, I want to talk a little bit about the world of weathering powders. Uh, my neighbor Mike uh, introduced me to uh, weathering that way versus paint. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that, and I'll show you the products that I got. And uh, we'll go ahead and weather the caboose that we wired up last week. So uh, we'll do that in this uh, episode. And uh, I'll uh, talk a little bit about some of the electronic stuff I got and some of the projects I have coming up. But uh, just wanted you to kind of check out here on the train passing by. Uh, this is a Southern boxcar that I got from the Flying Crow, Robert. He sent that to me. And I'll talk a little bit about some of the stuff I did on that. Um, you can see the weathered cars here, and here comes the caboose that we'll talk about uh, how I weathered there, and then uh, a little bit about these cars here. So uh, with that being said, let's go over to the bench and I'll show you some of the weathering products that I got. So over here on the bench, uh, I just wanted to show you that in addition to uh, the boxcar that Robert sent me sent me a really cool metal uh, plate there with his logo on it, which I thought was really pretty awesome. Uh, I'd like to get some of those made up. But uh, I want to take you over here to the bench and show you the weathering powders that I've been using. But uh, here's the uh, the southern boxcar that came from Robert. It's got some nice uh, weathering detail on top. And uh, it had the trucks were painted and the couplings, but I had to change the couplings out. Um, you can kind of see there on the gearbox uh, how it was colored up, but I had to put a KD in there uh, and I had to change the trucks out. It had sprung trucks and they didn't do real well on my layout. I've got some glitches in my uh, layout that uh, some of those older trucks don't like to work, but uh, I actually changed these to the uh, trucks that were on the uh, the Atherin Caboose, uh, because I changed those out to the electrical pickup ones. So these work perfectly on here, and it's tracking real well now. It's doing nice, and I think it's a great addition. So thank you, Robert. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, so over here, um, this is the weathering powder set that I got. I ordered it directly from Monroe Models, but you can get them in certain hobby shops and uh, online. But if you go to MonroeModels.us, I think it is, it's right on there. They're out of St. Cloud, Minnesota. That's where I uh, ordered them straight from them. I ordered the set here of uh, eight powders, which gave me a pretty good uh, variety. So dark rust, light rust, dirty yellow, which was perfect for those uh, UP, uh, well, the caboose and the uh, refrigerated boxcars. Chalky white, which is I'm going to use on the blue boxcar, the CP rail. Uh, that'll help uh, lighten that up a little bit. Then you've got medium gray, grimy black, medium earth, and dark earth um, for some of that mud splash up and stuff like that. So uh, that's a great starter set. These are very, very fine powders, um, and you can kind of see in there, they, they're designed, they work better than if you grind up your own, uh, because they are so fine, and the way it works is uh, you take a, a box car, or any car, engine, whatever it is, and you spray it with dull coat. Now, dull coat, <coughs> I've got a uh, bottle because I'm having a hard time finding it in the spray cans, but I bought a bottle of it. It's Tester's Dull Coat. This is lacquer based. So what it does when you spray it on a, uh, a piece of rolling stock is the lacquer actually goes into the finish of the plastic and it opens up the pores and kind of, uh, some people call it crazing uh, or etching and it opens up those pores. And what it does is it gives uh, the actual uh, plastic uh, a surface that these powders can bite onto and hold onto. So in reality, you really don't need much more than the powders once you brush them on. Uh, 
Some people will take dull coat afterwards and after they've weathered something and go ahead and spray it on to kind of set it in. That will change the way it looks a little bit. Some people leave it just completely alone. It just depends on the look that you want. If you do leave it alone, there is a potential that it can be wiped off. You can take Windex or water and actually wipe it off. Um, it'd be pretty hard to get it out of all the nooks and crannies, but if you make a bad mistake, you can wipe it off and start over. This box car here, I weathered uh, with the powders a little bit. Um, and one nice thing about powders, what you can do is uh, you can wet a spot. And then as you can see here, I just kind of globbed it on there. And it looks like you've got some areas where the rust is, you know, peeling the paint off and stuff. There's another place where it's just a rusty spot. Um, another technique that I did uh, that I've learned and I'm, I'm finding out is to take my uh, hobby knife and make a couple of scratches in the paint. And then I used some of the dark colors to make some uh, marks that the door would make, at, you know, some scraping marks as it opens. Um, there's some of the the brown underneath that uh, gets on the trucks and under the undercarriage from splash up and stuff. Some of the dirt and grime and rust. So I'm really liking the way these powders work. Uh, it's pretty cool. Now uh, we have found that they work very well with soft brushes. So if you imagine like your girlfriend or your wife puts on makeup, they use a very, very soft brush. And you wanna get a variety of brushes that are kind of like that, uh, almost like the one that ladies use to apply makeup. And uh, they they make a few of them. I got these at Hobby Lobby. This is a nice one for applying. Um, and then I've got a couple here, uh, smaller sizes that you can dry brush with afterwards, but they're very, very soft and they hold that uh, powder very well. So that's kind of my adventure into the weathering powders at this point. And I'll keep you updated as I do some more uh, cars and rolling stock, but uh, just wanted to uh, share with you guys. Okay, let me show you what I'm working on now also. Uh, I'm gonna wire up another caboose. Uh, Mike wants me to do one for him. It's gonna be a bay window caboose. We wanna put the red and the green lights in it. Um, I still need to get another Atherin caboose. I'm thinking a bay window like what I got, but uh, uh, I still need to get it, but I'm, a, I'm amassing the parts for it. So this time, instead of the three millimeter LEDs, I wanna go with these micro LEDs and you can see just how small these are, uh, about the size of a match head. And we're gonna be able to stack one on top of the other. So we're gonna have on each end of the caboose, let's imagine this is a caboose, we'll have a, a red one and a green one, both sides, red, green. And then depending on which direction you're going with the DCC controller, we'll use the NCE light it just like we did. <clears throat> if red is on this way, which will be the back, green will be on this way for the front, vice versa. If red is on this way, green will be on that way. So that's the way I'll wire it. But I wanted to show you these neat little micro lights I got. A uh, pack of 25 uh, came with the resistors and everything. So I've got those, a red, red pack and a green pack. And then also this time I went ahead and ordered the actual NCE super capacitors, which are the 300 microfarad 2.7 volt. It came with six of them. They're a little bit smaller than the big green ones that I used on my caboose. A uh, little bit uh, more narrow around, uh, smaller around, and they may not take up as much room. So we're gonna use those on this next one. But I just wanted to show you, uh, we're gearing up for uh, another uh, uh, project where we're gonna light a couple of cabooses. So uh, still need to get the, like I said, need to get a caboose for myself and uh, I'm still, uh, waiting for the uh, trucks, the uh, electrical pickup trucks. I've got a set of two of them coming. They haven't been shipped yet, so I'm waiting on those. Like I promised, we are at Neighbor Mike's and we are uh, doing some weathering. So as you can see, we've got uh, different types of powders, uh, all the different colors. I like these Monroe model uh, powders. They really work well. 
and I bought a set and then Mike and I were just at the train store today and we bought a couple other individual ones like light rust and rusty brown some of the ones that didn't come with the set but uh, so far I've done one half of the uh, caboose here as you can see um, I've got some dirt kicked up uh, underneath I've been working on the uh, the trucks getting some rust on there and just fading the yellow out a little bit with some uh, chalky white and some dirty yellow so that's uh, kind of how it's come out there let me turn it around for comparison this is uh, this side I have not done anything yet other than the dull coat so that's what we're doing we're we're making sure that it's very subtle at this point but that's how it looks here for comparison is the one that Mike loaned me um, that I was using so uh, you can see it's got some of the same things I'm doing and that's my inspiration and my model so uh, I'm going to continue now on with the top and the other side and we'll check back in a little bit all right, well, we're done here, and uh, you, I'll show you kind of what I got going on. Uh, definitely some dirt and grime kicked up from the road around the trucks and the wheels. Uh, a little bit of dirt on the sides and the ends and uh, the platform. And let's spin it around here. On the other side, uh, some dirt kicked up along there some grime underneath the bay window and then uh i think what I, I really got carried away with and had some fun with was uh this smokestack having some soot and stuff come out of it and wash down the side so that's kind of my my uh, special little touch there so uh here's mike's for comparison he's gonna put it on the tray so there's the original one that i had borrowed and here's mine. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm thinking it came out pretty good. All right, so I just wanna do a quick demonstration. We're not gonna to go too far with this car here. This is uh, uh, one of the original Tyco cars that I've had since I was a kid. I've done a little work on it. Uh, I've uh, changed the wheels on it, but I've not updated the trucks yet, which I wanna do, but anyway, um, as I mentioned a little earlier in the video, I sprayed this with dull coat, so it's ready to take the powders. So I just want to start with a little of the chalky white, which I have back here. Also, I recommend you have something on your work surface. These cutting boards, it, these powders get on here and it, it's hard to get it off. So I use uh, aluminum foil. Plus, when you're done, whatever extra you have on the foil, you can put in a little container and keep it for sort of a custom mixed color of your own, uh, which is kind of cool. But uh, let's start with just a little bit of the white and we'll just take the, the really soft sort of small brush and get some on there. You'll see how it sticks on there. And I just wanna come along and just sort of dab it on. This is the chalky white color, and it doesn't matter if you spread it on, you know, get a little bit on there where you don't want, but just, just sort of do that, dab it on wherever you're gonna work. I'm just gonna work in this area right here. I'm just gonna dab it on, and then I'm gonna draw it down like this. And you can already see how it sticks to the surface and kind of streaks it. Now, it looks a little more streaky than I want, so I'm gonna take one of these sort of makeup brushes, like I told you, that are nice and soft, and I'm just gonna brush it, dry brush it. And you can see how it draws it out and it evens it out a little bit. So basically, this section right there, it's really dulled it out and made it look weathered. So let's, uh, let's continue on with a little bit more. We'll just start right up here. And I'm just dabbing it on. I'll draw it down. And maybe I want to get a little more along here. Don't worry about it getting on the rail or whatever down there. It's all going to brush off. No big deal.
and just draw it out like that. So there you go. If that's the effect you want, you're great. And if not, like I said, it's powder. You can wet your finger. You can use some Windex or water and just wipe it down. And that'll change it as well. It'll make it a little more streaky. Picked up a little bit of the, the dirt that's in the chalky white and kind of changed that as well. So not quite so washed out there, but just a little bit of brown streaks with it. And just continue that along here. And there you go. So you can see that it, it really does make a dramatic effect on the cars. Now, before we're done, I'm not gonna do the whole car. I just wanna do a little bit of uh, maybe some medium earth down along where where the trucks, the car, the, the wheels would splash up on here. Of course, it would get in there. I just wanna have a little bit there like that. And then I like to put a little on the trucks when I was spraying it. I'm sure a little bit of that lacquer got on there, but you can dirty up the trucks a little bit and even the wheels, it'll stick a little bit. So I kind of just made it look like splash up. If you like it like that, leave it. If not, you want to soften it a little. Just take that brush, soften it just like that. So anyway, you continue on the whole thing, do the top. You can use rust, you can use all the different colors, you can blend them, you can do however you like. And that's pretty much the beauty of these powders and how things come out. So uh, I encourage you guys to, to try working with them. It uh, sort of opened up a whole new world for me. It's a little bit easier. Now, some guys will do a combination of washes. Let me grab one here. Um, you've seen me work with the washes before. This is a Vallejo product. Some guys work with a combination of uh, washes, paints, and powders. So it's you're not limited to just one. You can do all of it, you know, whatever you want. I encourage you to, to look on YouTube. There's lots of guys showing how to do weathering. So I'm just starting in this, but uh, it's actually uh, kind of fun. All right, everybody, that's all we have time for this week. But thank you so much for watching. And... Uh, Thank you to all you new subscribers who are uh, pushing that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. We are very close to 400 at the time I'm uh, filming this. So uh, again, like I always say, it's mind blowing. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody that sends me comments and questions. I try to answer all of them and I really appreciate you guys. So uh, thank you very much and we'll catch you next update.